Judge number three, AKC Canine Good Citizen Evaluator, Beverly Albrick. Love to see a dog that could walk well on a leash, as well as maybe do some tricks. Good morning, judges. An Australian sheepdog mixed with a Polish lowland sheepdog. Well, I like Lucy's looks a lot, and I like that it was a mixed breed that I actually hadn't heard of. But the only thing that Lucy has going against her is she's very hyper and not very well behaved. I see we still have the shoes on. I would rather see the dog just get in shape and not have to wear the booties. <laughs> Paris is, is a great dog, a little too puppy-like for my taste in some ways. Not as confident as I would like, but still very friendly. So. So that gave him a lot of points in my book. Thank you. You wanted to get back to your mama. <laughs> there you go, totally go. Go see your mama. <laughs> On this episode of Mythbusters, Adam and Cece have enlisted dog trainer Beverly Ulbrich. The idea with the walk is you want the dog paying attention to you, not everything else around you. Um, if you think about like how a, a pack travels, there's one pack leader and the rest of the dogs are behind it just following naturally and easily. And obviously right now she's trying to be that pack leader. But a session or two with confidence inspiring Beverly and timid Cece is responding not only to the expert. We're gonna sit. Good baby. Good girl. She's listening to Adam. Sit down. There you go. Good, Good down. Girl. Good, Good down. down. <laughs> now she's really engaging. This is great. Obedience training. It's an option open to all rocket dogs. Trainers like Beverly Ulbrich offer their services to Paley often at a discount. So, one important thing is even how you walk the dog. So for an example, what I'd like to see is, if you walk Keisha, what she should be willing to do is fall behind you, if you're her pack leader, right, and follow you. So let's see how she does on that. So make that tight turn, and see how you had to bump into her and you're kind of forcing her over? That's showing that you're not in charge of the walk. To her, she wanted to be in charge, she wanted to continue forward, you really had to push her there. So as we walk away, I'm gonna come like this, and when I go to turn, I'm gonna let her know it's it's my turn. See how that was much more abrupt? So be a lot more abrupt and direct with her. Let her kind of know. Have the attitude of she will follow me and make that sharp turn. There you go. Much better. We're at the Dolores Park in San Francisco, one of the city's legal off-leash parks. Beverly Ulbrich is the pooch oh, coach, boy. has worked with more than 100 Bay Area pit bulls, including this impromptu session at Dolores Park today. Touching his ears, making sure he doesn't react to that. Touching the whole body, so he doesn't like me going back there. He's a little distrusting. That to me is, is, is not a good thing. You want Your dog should just be, be okay being touched anywhere. The first thing she noticed in studying Friday's case is that the dogs were still able to breed. The fact that they're not neutered and spayed uh, in general can make dogs a lot more hyper and, and even aggressive. On top of it, the female might have been going into heat, they said, which is going to add some other weird things for both dogs. Like the male feeling, the young boy, Nicholas, was a threat in the dog's relationship. Once the boy gets older and his voice drops and his hormones start to change, he becomes a man, especially if he's taller too, in the dog's eyes. And many dogs will then find that more threat. Dog trainer and behaviorist Beverly Ulbrich joins us in the studio along with Compass. So if you've got a dog, though, that is a little possessive of, say, a bone or a rawhide chew or something like that, how do you begin to work with them? No matter what, this is a cookie, actually, so most dogs would take it, grab it, start eating it. Compass, drop it. Good girl. Ah, good girl. And that's how well your dog should be willing to release things. So talk a little bit about you know, how you can test your dog and what you really need to be looking for then. Yeah, the first signs to me are if you go to pet the dog, like if, if my dog's eating like this and you go to pet them and they tense up, mm -hmm. they get real stiff, that's a first sign. That's pretty easy to work through. You just keep petting them and keep making, making them comfortable with it. If, it. if it's to the point already, though, that a dog is actually growling at you, um, snarling or snapping, mm -hmm. you should probably get in a, a trained behaviorist to <laughs> come in and help you through this is situation. This, yeah. Beverly Ulbrich is San Francisco's renowned pooch coach, a doggy behavioral specialist who finds some validity in the gadget. Do you buy the science here? Yeah, that's actually a pretty good one. She is. She doesn't like these other dogs right now. She sees them as threats and she does see them as something to fear. <laughs> Uh, she goes from 11 to 12 pounds, depending. She has to watch her figure. Uh, she was at the beginning of the movie, but she no longer is a puppy. She's now 12. No one people hears. Um, not that I'm aware of. I hate horror movies. They scare me. 
know if there was any enjoyable shoots. 